Hi, I'm Chandrasekhar Gupta. Today we are here to discuss about the programming concepts in Target TGS program. Time and tide waits for none. So we value our time and we don't want to waste it any further. If you are here, you might have already read C programming or any sort of programming language in your curriculum. And we are not going to discuss each and every detail of it. It's kind of an overview where we try to uh, cover all the topics and all the areas where an interviewer or an examiner can focus on. If you are here for very basic content, you can go check out other courses. After that, you can continue watching this lecture. So, before digging further, let's try to understand how computers interpret programming languages. Every value is associated with a particular code. It's called as ASCII. American Standard Code for Information Interchange. For example, capital A is having an ASCII value of 65. And there are different ways in which the 65 can be stored in the system. It can store in binary number system or it can be stored in ternary number system or it can even store as 65 in decimal itself. So, we all know that the binary is being used. Let's try to understand why we are using binary codes in the machine. We can use binary code because of two main reasons. First thing being, it is more natural. Everything in the nature can be closely associated with two things, on or off, which can be easily represented with the help of 1 and 0 respectively in the binary system. And the second one being the failure of other systems. If you just look at the reason why the other systems has been a failure, it is because of the charge propagation. If we consider a ternary system, consider this example. Let's try to look at this state. Here, computer cannot associate this particular value with either 0 or 1. Because of it, there will be a difference in understanding or interpreting a particular letter. Similarly, in case of decimal system, it tends to become more difficult. So, if we decide a value which is over here, computer cannot decide whether it should be associated with 8 or 9. And it will be difficult to decide a particular value which is required at that point. This is because of the failure of the other system. So, we tend to use binary over the existing ones. And let's see how binary is more helpful when compared to the existing systems. Consider the binary system. If you look at here, this is a capacitor which holds the charge. If the charge was propagated inside the capacitor, it will be treated as positive. If the charge was outside, it will be treated as negative. So, 0 and 1 can be easily associated and can be easily decoded with the help of a binary system. So, we should tend to understand the computers use binary system and with the help of a single bit, we can store either a 0 or 1. Two values can be associated with the help of a 1 bit. If you consider two bits, four values can be associated with it. Similarly, if you consider n bits, it associates a value from 0 to 2 power n minus 1. Now, after dealing with the binary codes, it's time to discuss about data types. Data types are similar to vessels. For example, if you take a water bottle, it can be used to store water. Like a character data type is used to store a character. For your understanding, a character will be having a single digit. 1 can even be a character. Ten cannot be a character, it is having two digits. And if you take a round vessel, it can store probably milk or something. In a similar way, an integer can store an integer value. A float can store a floating point value. And you also need to remember that, depending upon the size of the vessel, the quantity is changed. Similarly, depending upon the qualifiers, short, long, the range of the values will be changed in the data types. So, how to calculate the range of the data types? Let's have a look. So, we should understand with the help of this, we will be able to decide the size range of any data type. Suppose, for example, let's take a character which is of 1 byte and it tends to have 8 bits. As we have seen earlier, each and every bit is capable of storing either a 0 or 1. As we are having 8 bits, it is capable of storing 2 power 8 values. If we start with 0, it can go till 2 powers 8 minus 1. So, the range of character lies from 0 to 255. Similarly, if you consider an integer, it can be either 2 bytes or 4 bytes 
depending upon the 16 bit or 32 bit architecture of the machines. So uh, 2 bytes will be 16 bits and it will be 32 bits. Let's take an example of 16 bit integer. Similar to the previous case, each and every bit can be associated to store either a 0 or 1. But in the case of integers, we can have the positive values as well as the negative values. So we'll be using the first bit to store the positive or negative sign, which can be stored with the help of uh, 1 and 0 respectively. Now we are having only 15 bits over here and it can accommodate 2 power 15 minus 1 values. It tend to store from 0 to 2 power 15 minus 1 and as it is also having a negative sign, it can even store the negative values and it can range till minus 2 power 15. So this is how the size of data types can be decided. I think after knowing how to calculate the maximum size of a particular data type, I think it's time for us to just look into what are the different data types that exist and what are the different qualifiers. We are not going much in detail about the different types of data types as we all know about them and we just tend to understand what are all the existing types. Here we have character, integer, float and double and these are the qualifiers short, long, sign and unsign. Short and long can be used to change about the size whereas sign and unsigned are actually helpful to identify whether the number is signed or unsigned. Suppose if you remember while calculating the range of an integer we have used the first bit to represent the positive or negative number but in the case of unsigned integer a if a value is declared like that then we will not be using this for sign bit and we will be using even the first bit to associate the value then the range of unsigned int becomes 0 to 2 power 16 minus 1. I think you can relate the previous example to this. Now I want to discuss about data type which people tend to ignore generally which is very easy and it will not take much of your time just try to understand this. If we consider an enum data type it uses to enhance the readability of our code. Suppose for example let us consider uh, the enum what do you say this is the keyword and this is the identifier this is the name. If we are using all the months in our uh, code January, February, March and so on till December and we have to associate each and every value in sequence. Whenever the January comes it has to be replaced with 0, whenever the February comes it has to be replaced with 1 and so on. So enum will automatically do that for us. When you declare enum months and what are all the things inside it, it will automatically assign from 0, 1 and so on. The first value will be associated with 0 and the second value will be associated with 1 and so on. Suppose there is a slight modification to this enum data type where you declare January to be 1 then February will be automatically assigned to 2 and so on. The other case can be we can leave out the first and if suppose for example for February if we declare it as 3 then January will be 0, February will be 3 and the next suppose if March is following it it will be 4 and so on. Now you have understood about all the data types how to calculate their size what are the different data types that exist and also you know about the special data type enum. Now after understanding how to calculate the range of a data type I think it's time to wind off. But before that array we all know that array is used to store multiple values of the same data type. Have you ever thought of a way where array can store a value of different data types? Think about it. Stay tuned to find out.